This is the Louis T. Network. In the lab room. Welcome, you are in the lab room. I'm your host, Lou. Thank you for joining me here on the Tuesday edition of In the Lab Room. Tuesday means there's some Monday night football to recap. So let's talk about it. Seahawks at the St. Louis Rams, NFC West, family business. This Rams team, you know, going through a little bit of turmoil right now. They felt really good about the fortunes of their season after starting 1-3 on the season and looking very bad doing so. They reeled off two consecutive victories. Again, the opponents that they beat on that two-game winning streak, not the best teams in the league. But again, I don't care who you beat or how you beat them. Just beat them. Again, if you play bad teams, I really would like to see you blow them out. But a win's a win's a win in the National Football League. They found a way back to 3-3. Three and three. Heard a very interesting story about these Rams. Jeff Fisher walks in when they're 1-3 and, three and and leaves the room. And, and everybody's a little uncomfortable. He said he'll be right back. They really don't know what to expect. He comes back with some beers, hands them out, and says, hey, <laughs> let's start this season all over again, okay? Let's start over from scratch, and, and, and let's get this thing up and going. They reeled off two consecutive victories. Everybody went crazy when he handed out the beers. They won two football games. They got back to 500. And when you look at Sam Bradford's numbers, 14 touchdowns, four interceptions, Sam Bradford was starting to figure this thing out. Now, they go to Carolina, they get beat up, but they made mistakes in that football game, okay? You watch that football game and you see what the Rams were able to do. They don't make mistakes. Zach Stacy had a whale of a ball game. You look at the Tavon Austin fumble, you look at the Tavon Austin touchdown that's called back because of Jake Long and I believe it was clipping. Either way, it doesn't matter. They made too many mistakes in that football game to win. And the first play of the game, Sam Bradford gets hit, ball goes in the air, it's a return for a pick six. Those kind of things you can't have happen on the road. But look, all of those things pale in comparison to the actual loss of your quarterback, that being Sam Bradford, for the entire year. You really don't know where the Rams were going to go after that loss. And not just the loss itself to, to Carolina, but the loss of Sam Bradford, a guy that you felt like was starting to turn the corner. He was your leader now where do you go? And I didn't know which St. Louis Rams team was going to show up on Monday night. Look, they don't get a lot of Monday night football games. I, I didn't know what St. Louis Rams team was going to show up. I thought they were going to be absolutely blown out. Then you have the Seattle Seahawks, a team that's 6-1, riding high, playing some excellent football. They expect Percy Harvin back any day now. And they feel like they're starting to get healthy. They're starting to get guys back. They're waiting for Giacomini to come back. They're waiting for... Russell Okun to come back, and they're still winning all the while they're waiting for these guys to come back on the men. So if you look at the Seattle Seahawks, they're finding ways to beat teams while they're banged up, and once they get healthy, they feel like, hey, you're in trouble. And I felt like here's a perfect opportunity for them to get a layup on a team that is banged up. They're searching for answers. They're scrambling. They have to turn to Kellen Clemens on Monday Night Football. I just didn't see this game being very competitive. But again, it's family business. And when it's family business, you throw everything else out of the window because nothing else matters. I know you. You know me. Let's get it on. And so who knows you better than your family, right? So off to St. Louis we go. And wow. I mean, I came to the game late. You know, I had it on record. I had some things going on. And I said, by the time I get to this game and I catch up to live action, the score will probably be about 17 to nothing. And I'll be disinterested before I could even really get comfortable in my seat. Well, by the time I caught up midway through the first quarter or probably the latter half of the first quarter, surprise, surprise, surprise. It's 3 nothing. St. Louis. And what I had to remind myself, and again, many times when a team loses their quarterback, I, I, I immediately focus in on what they have lost and forget about the things that they still have on their football team. When Matt Schaub went down, and even though he was playing bad football, the next guy up 
into the game was Case Keenum. And I said to myself, Case Keenum on the road against Kansas City? What? Oh, they're going to get destroyed. What I forgot to remember and what I failed to remember is that Houston has a really good defense. And the Chiefs don't score a lot of points. See, when you focus in on one thing, you fall into the trap. And I fell into the trap. I, I failed to remember and focus in on other aspects of the game. Like, hey, this St. Louis Rams team, and I've been talking about this all year long, can get after your quarterback. They get at home. They get on a fast track, a fast surface, and you don't have adequate tackles. Look out. You're in for a long night. And I forgot that the Seattle Seahawks are still banged up. That offensive line still is in shambles. They're still missing both of their tackles. I forgot that Robert Quinn, the medicine man, is still a beast with the antidote to your offensive line woes. He's going to get around your tackle and get to the quarterback. Whether he's on the left side, whether he's on the right side, you can't block him. He is so explosive and athletic. He can bend at the hips. I love Robert Quinn. I've talked about him numerous times since he's been drafted, since he's come into the league and played well. Last year was his breakout year, and I said, man, I love this guy. And you look at Rob, or you look at Chris Long across from him, and he hasn't had a huge year this year. But again, much like the rest of this St. Louis Rams offensive line, you don't have adequate guys in front of him. He'll take advantage. And so, two and a half sacks coming into this game for Chris Long. That all was about to change in this game against the Seattle Seahawks. And the thing that I was impressed with was Kellen Clemens looked a lot more spry than I remember. I don't remember him being as athletic as he was in this game, but maybe I need to remember he went to Oregon. And normally, if you go to Oregon, you got to have some kind of movement. And so I was impressed with his movement in and out of the pocket. He wasn't just standing back there waiting for the rush to get to him. He was moving around trying to make some things happen, of course. He's Kelly Clemens. He's a backup for a reason. He made mistakes in this game, but they were minimal. He threw some picks, but they were like punts. They, they were down the field. There was only about one egregious throw that, that ended up being picked off, but he made some smart decisions. If it wasn't there, he ate it, he ran, or he took a sack. They punted the football. He didn't do anything egregious to, to make them lose this football game. So from that standpoint, the Rams had it figured out. They knew exactly what they wanted to do in this game. Run the football with Zach Stacy and Daryl Richardson. You know, give Kellen Clemens an opportunity with a successful run game to go play action fake on first down, find some guys down the field, and see if we can exploit this Seahawks defense that way. Not, not, not going to drop back and just try to throw it and sling it around. We don't have the receivers nor the quarterback to do so. Offensive line isn't the greatest. How about we just run the football, see what happens. If it works, guess what? We can go play action fake off of it. And, and do some things, and that's what they did in this game. And the defense did their job, and the offense did theirs. And even though this offense had opportunities to put more points on the scoreboard, and Legatron missed a field goal, and that one came back to haunt him if he makes that field goal. And I expect him to make just about everything he kicks because he's such a talented kicker. You miss a field goal like that, and I'll get to that later on. But look, let, let me get back to this Seattle Seahawks offense. They struggled in this game. And again, Russell Wilson, to me, is a really good quarterback. But this offensive line, they're putting too much strain on him. He, he's got to run. He's got to throw it. He's got to do everything. He's got to get out of the pocket because guys are coming after him. At some point, you're going to run into guys that are just as athletic, if not more athletic than you. You can't run away. You can't get away. And when they came to St. Louis last year, this is exactly what happened. They put pressure. And I said, this is the blueprint for beating the Seattle Seahawks right here. Tough defense, getting after Russell Wilson, bottling him up in the pocket. He couldn't escape the pocket because they, they were collapsing the pocket. They were containing him while still getting pressure on him. And the biggest key was, and everyone doesn't have one of these guys, was Robert Quinn. He tried to outrun Robert Quinn one time, and I, I saw the speed. Oh, my goodness. The closing speed on that play. Wow. <laughs> you can't teach that. Either you have it or you don't. And most guys do not have the closing speed, the actual burst and acceleration that Robert Quinn has. And that kept Russell Wilson contained all night. And he got hit repeatedly in this game. He was beat up. He had to be hit at least 15 times, if not more, in this game 
That's exactly what you do not want to happen to your quarterback. So they intimidated Russell Wilson. And I felt like the Seahawks actually played into the hand of the Rams because they only ran the football eight times. Now, there's no excuse for Beast Mode to only touch it eight times. I, and look, they didn't have the ball a lot, granted. But again, they should have been running on first down. They should have been running on second down. And make this St. Louis Rams team react to the run and then give Russell Wilson some time to pick them apart. Instead, you went the reverse. You tried to get Russell Wilson to pass on them to open up rushing lanes, and it didn't work out. So you didn't sustain offense in this game. You, you gave the St. Louis Rams the one thing you can't give a team that is downtrodden. And they're down on their luck. They got Kelly Clemens. You gave them hope. You let them hang around. You gave them a chance. They felt good about themselves. They were down 7-6. to six. You know, they were down 14-9. to nine. They felt like they were in this game from start to finish, and they were. And so they felt like they had a chance to steal this one. Legatron misses that field goal. And Greg Zerline has been money for this Rams team since he was drafted last season, but he had to, he had to make that field goal because you knew, you just had a sense that this Rams team isn't getting in the end zone tonight. If they're going to win this game, they're going to have to win with five field goals. And you just, you got that sense when they got to nine and you're like, man, they should have gotten the end zone on this possession. And they didn't, and they had to settle for another field goal. He said, okay, I see where this is going. If they're going to win tonight, they can't allow the Seattle Seahawks to score any more points. They already had 14. They can't allow them to score any more points. Not a field goal, nothing. They, they got to keep them at 14, and they got to kick five field goals and win this game. That's where this thing was going. And by him missing that field goal, you know, midway through the fourth quarter, eh, made things a little dicey because, A, you were giving Seattle field position. Defense didn't care, though. See, Seattle, Seattle couldn't get it done on this St. Louis Rams defense. They, they really held it down and gave their offense an opportunity to win this game. When they needed a stop, they got the stop, got the football back to their offense, and they went on one final drive, and they gave it one final push, and they got all the way down to the two-yard line, and man, oh man, you felt like they got to get in at this point, and the Seattle Seahawks defense did what defenses that are supposed to be elite did, do, excuse me, they stopped them, you, you, you put your foot down in the dirt, and you draw that line and you say, hey, we're not going any further. And then you got to find a way to grit your teeth and bear down and not move. You got to be a guy that stands up and, and, and a team that stands up with total resistance at that point. You can't budge. You budge. You only got two yards of real estate. You budge and you give in. You lose the football game. And this is a game that you can ill afford to lose. San Francisco is playing the best, their best football of the season. You can't afford to lose this game. So this was a huge Stop for them. They needed to stop them on four downs and win this football game. And that's exactly what they did. They did not let the Rams in the end zone. And this is what I kind of expected. Again, when they missed that field goal, I said, they're not getting in the end zone. You got to make that field goal and give yourself a chance to beat them with a field goal. They did not. And they, they get a goal line stand. And I didn't like the play call on the last play. I mean, they had an opportunity. Givens drops the, the slant route. And it, it was a good throw. It was a perfect play call. If he catches that, he's going to be able to stretch that over the goal line and they're going to win this football game. He drops it, and that's what bad teams do. They find a way to lose. They don't know how to win. You know, good teams find ways to win that game like Seattle did. The bad teams find a way to lose. You miss a field goal that would have gave you an opportunity to win this game with a field goal. Instead, you miss that field goal. Now you need a touchdown. And then you get down there. You get an opportunity. Ball goes right through your hands. You lose the football game. So bad teams find ways to lose games. And this Rams team still doesn't know how to win quite yet. And it showed down the stretch. Seattle holds their ground and they get it done 14-9 in a nail-biter. This is family business. This is what it's all about in the National Football League. Expect the unexpected, especially when you're within the division. Anything goes. Kudos to the Rams for, for really giving us a good Monday night football game because this could have been a blowout. Kelly Clemens first start of the year. No, Matt, no Sam Bradford. This could have got ugly. Instead, this defense rose to the occasion. This offense hung in there. But at the end of the day, you don't get moral victories. You still lost the football game. Weren't able to get it done in the clutch. Seattle gets it done. Go, goes to 7-1 on the season with a 14-9 victory on the road in St. Louis. The Rams did it again. They got after Russell Wilson. Made him uncomfortable. Forced him into some mistakes. And, and again, 
they didn't get a lot of uh, turnovers, but he was very skittish in that pocket. He, he, he really didn't know what to do. He tried to run, he tried to turn around, and, and somebody was there. And he's used to being able to get out of the pocket. He couldn't get out of the pocket. And it just wasn't going to happen. Chris Long had three sacks. You look on the other side, and Robert Quinn had three sacks. It, there was nowhere for him to go. Nowhere for him to go. They sacked him seven times on the night. It was just a clinic on how not to protect your quarterback. And again, I think he was hit another eight or nine, maybe ten times in this game, aside from the sacks. So he was beat up in this game. Russell Wilson took a pounding, and he ran the football a couple of times and took some shots as well. This is exactly what the Seattle Seahawks do not want to see from their offense. Russell Wilson taking a beating. He's not a big guy. You do not want him taking all those hits. He took a plethora of hits in this game, but they came away with the W, and that's the most important thing. But this is exactly why I'm a little wary. And again, I know it's family business. These guys know you, and they, they come with a unique you know, presser package that most teams can't put on the field. But this is why I don't trust Seattle on the road right here. These are the type of games that scare me about this Seattle Seahawks team. Because I'm starting to lean towards them and I'm starting to give them respect on the road and, and this is what they go and do. They won the game. But you're, you're not supposed to. If you are who you say you are and who we all think you are, you can't lose to Seattle or, excuse me, you can't lose to St. Louis on the road. You just can't do it. And the simple fact that they almost lost this game, a little bit scary. A little bit scary. A little bit nerve-wracking. For, for Seattle Seahawks fans and for a person like myself who I feel like I should be able to trust them, I'm not so sure anymore. I'm not so sure anymore. So they get it done. They go to 7-1. They still are on top of the NFC West division, but that's not the way they wanted to do it. But they'll take it. A win's a win's a win. The National Football League. Rams dropped to 3-5 and five on the season. Heartbreaking loss. They gave it a valiant effort, but again, no style points and no points go to being close. Almost doesn't count. Just like Brandy told me when I was about 12 years old. Almost doesn't count. Almost doesn't count. It doesn't count. So kudos for giving it a heck of an effort, but you didn't get the job done. So you know what time it is. I'm going to tack on this quick. Extra point. And the Texans did something smart. They named Case Keenum the starter in week number nine, and I think that's the right move. Schaub is ready to go, but, and Gary Kubiak has left the door open for Schaub's return. He said, hey, he's still my starter. He's still my guy, but I tell you what, that'll change very quickly if Case Keenum goes out and plays the way he played against Kansas City in week nine. He, he'll be singing a different tune. He'll, he'll keep stringing him along and saying, hey, he's still my guy, but Case Keenum will be getting the starts, and I think it's a smart move. You know what Matt Schaub is at this point of his career. If you're Gary Kubiak, I think the only way you save your job is that you have a revelation in Case Keenum and you show, you know, the rest of the Texans brass that, hey, I got this guy. I've coached him up. He's comfortable in my system. We can win with Case Keenum and we can pick right up where Matt Schaub and this offense left off at if you just give me a chance to show you that, hey, we're not as bad off as we may seem. If this thing is a train wreck and continues to be for the rest of the season and Case Keenum isn't the answer and you need a quarterback, they might just start all over. And I don't know if that's the worst thing in the world. They might just start all over. New scheme, new coach, new personnel. You know, you'll keep a lot of the main pieces around like Andre Johnson and Arian Foster and your offensive line, guys like that, Dwayne Brown and, and guys of that nature. But the crux of what you want to do offensively might change. And I don't know because Arian Foster is a zone running running back. So I don't know how far you can go you know, to the right with this thing. You might have to stay the course if you're the Texans, if you want to maximize Arian Foster's ability, or maybe your offensive coordinator just has to be a zone blocking scheme guy like Greg Knapp or something like that. But I, I don't know. I'm looking very, very far down the road. Right now, in the meantime, in the right now, the Texans are doing the right thing by starting Case Keenum at quarterback in week number nine because I want to see more of Case Keenum and see if what we saw against the Chiefs in week seven was a fluke or if this guy's legit and he can actually play the quarterback position in the National Football League. So that's going to do it for the Tuesday edition of In the Lab Room. I thank you for joining me here on the program. If it happens in the National Football League, whether big or small, we cover it all here 
in the lab room. Come back on Wednesday. Join me as we break down the Pick'em Weekly from week number eight. And I give you the soul survivor. You know how it is on Wednesdays. I love Wednesdays. Come back and join me on Wednesday when I break all that stuff down. See you on Wednesday. Like the content? Want more? Sub up. In the lab room.